The moment you witness an aircraft carrier in action, it's clear this isn't just a ship. It's a self-contained floating city, meticulously crafted around a high-octane, inherently dangerous airport. Imagine fighter jets roaring off the deck, fully loaded, launching every two seconds, a truly incredible display of raw power and precision. Yet, within this awe-inspiring environment, countless subtle decisions shape every aspect of naval aviation. We'll uncover the compelling reasons behind these choices, from why the E-2 Hawkeye consistently leads the flight cycle to the clever engineering behind folding naval aircraft wings rather than simply making them smaller. We'll also delve into why the F-35C Lightning II was designed without its own gun, and perhaps most surprisingly, why some maritime aircraft routinely shut down an engine mid-flight. Prepare to discover the intricate logic that governs this extraordinary world. The unique demands of naval aircraft. On the surface, naval aircraft may appear nearly identical to their Air Force counterparts, but beneath that similarity lies a host of critical engineering adaptations specifically tailored for the punishing realities of carrier-based operations. Unlike aircraft that operate from long, stable runways on land, carrier-based planes must endure extreme mechanical forces every time they take off or land. A typical catapult launch from an aircraft carrier subjects the airframe to massive linear acceleration, hurling the plane from zero to nearly 150 knots in just a couple of seconds. The structure must absorb these forces repeatedly without fatigue or failure. Landing is equally brutal. Instead of gently rolling to a stop over thousands of feet, carrier-based aircraft slam down on a pitching rolling deck and are abruptly halted by arresting wires, a process that puts immense stress on the landing gear, tail hook assembly, and fuselage. Because of this, naval aircraft are often heavily reinforced, particularly around the landing gear and tail section. But strength isn't the only consideration. These specialized jets often feature larger wings than their Air Force variants. The increased wingspan provides greater lift at lower speeds, critical for short takeoffs and slow approaches on a carrier's compact flight deck, which typically spans just about 300 feet compared to the expansive 6,000 to 12,000 feet of a traditional runway. However, larger wings pose another problem aboard a ship where space is a premium. To resolve this, naval aircraft are designed with complex folding wing mechanisms, allowing their extended wings to be compacted neatly alongside other aircraft in crowded hangar bays or on the flight deck. Additionally, these aircraft are built with corrosion-resistant materials and coatings to withstand constant exposure to salt water and harsh marine conditions. From strengthened structures to intricate folding mechanisms and enhanced corrosion protection, every element of a naval aircraft's design is dictated by the challenges of life at sea, where engineering ingenuity becomes the bridge between survival and mission success. The subsurface threat. The biggest threat to an aircraft carrier doesn't descend from the sky. It emerges from below. A direct hit from a torpedo launched by a submarine can devastate a supercarrier. Torpedoes are particularly effective because, unlike airborne threats, a submarine can approach the carrier surreptitiously, drastically reducing reaction time to an incoming torpedo. This is where the MH-60 Seahawk helicopter plays a vital role. How can a helicopter in the sky detect a submarine operating underwater? The answer lies in the tubes loaded into the helicopter, known as sonoboys. These come in various shapes and forms and can be either automatically launched or manually deployed into the water. Each sonoboy is equipped with hydrophone sensors capable of detecting underwater sounds. Some sonoboys are highly sophisticated, unfolding upon water entry to deploy their receiver and transmitter antennas. In addition to the carrier-borne MH-60 helicopters, another aircraft patrols the waters in search of submarines, the P-8 Poseidon. While the P-8 doesn't operate from an aircraft carrier, it functions as a flying office with an impressive combat range of 1,200 nautical miles. This aircraft is also capable of launching sonoboys for submarine detection. Upon detecting a threat, similar to its predecessor, the P-3 Orion, the P-8 can launch torpedoes and harpoon missiles to neutralize it. Interestingly, the P-3 Orion would often patrol with one of its four engines shut off to conserve fuel during long-range patrols that could last over 10 hours. The eyes of the fleet. The E-2 Hawkeye is essentially a highly sophisticated radar system transported by air. 
You might wonder why a dedicated airborne radar is necessary when a carrier strike group's ships are already equipped with state-of-the-art radar systems like the ANSPY-1. The answer lies in the curvature of the Earth. Imagine a person standing at sea level. Due to the Earth's curvature, they can see less than three miles to the horizon. Elevate that same person to the summit of Mount Everest and, assuming clear air, their visible range expands to nearly 200 miles. The same principle applies to radar. When the E-2 Hawkeye operates at an altitude of 30,000 feet, its powerful radars can detect threats over 200 miles away. This critical radar data is then transmitted to the carrier strike group in real time. Detecting threats at such extended ranges provides invaluable additional time for commanders, allowing them to make informed decisions and respond effectively to neutralize incoming dangers. The very essence of early warning systems revolves around maintaining a crucial step ahead of adversaries. The E-2 Hawkeye provides this significant advantage by tracking up to 300 low- and high-altitude targets, including airplanes, ships, and missiles, within its surveillance volume of over 3 million cubic miles. This unparalleled capability is precisely why the Hawkeye is aptly dubbed the Eyes of the Fleet. Even the E-2 has had its share of close calls due to arresting wire malfunctions during recovery. Fortunately, the swift reactions of the pilot and the E-2's twin turboprop engines have averted certain disaster, turning potentially catastrophic incidents into moments of pride for the crew on the USS Eisenhower's flight deck. Interestingly, it is possible to remove a damaged radome from the E-2, effectively making the Hawkeye topless. Since the radome is installed at the aircraft's center of gravity, the E-2 can still be flown without it. You might assume the E-2 is always the first aircraft launched from the flight deck and the last one recovered so it can establish and maintain an aerial surveillance picture for the entire flight cycle. However, this isn't the main reason. The E-2 is a large, somewhat unwieldy aircraft, and its menacing propellers make handlers wary of being too close. It's simply a considerable effort to maneuver this aircraft around the flight deck, so handlers prefer to get it airborne before the flight deck becomes a bustling hub of activity. There's another crucial factor. The E-2 lacks an auxiliary power unit, APU. When the main engines of an airplane are shut down, the APU typically provides electrical power to various onboard systems. In the absence of an APU, the Hawkeye must be physically plugged into a ground power source to keep its cabin air conditioning and other electronic systems operational until its engines are powered up. This can only be done in a limited number of spots on the flight deck. These logistical considerations are the key reasons why the E-2 Hawkeye is both the first aircraft catapulted and the last one recovered. The nuclear heartbeat of US supercarriers. Every great city needs a reliable power source, and for a massive floating metropolis like a US Navy supercarrier, that power comes from a truly extraordinary place, nuclear reactors. Unlike many other navies that rely on conventional fossil fuels, all active US aircraft carriers, from the Nimitz class to the latest Gerald R. Ford class, are powered by onboard nuclear propulsion systems. At its core, a naval nuclear reactor operates on principles similar to a land-based nuclear power plant, albeit on a smaller, more robust scale designed for the extreme demands of military service. Inside the reactor, controlled nuclear fission occurs. Atoms of enriched uranium are split, releasing an immense amount of energy in the form of heat. This heat is then used to boil water, generating incredibly high-pressure steam. This steam is the real workhorse, turning massive turbines connected to the ship's propellers for propulsion, generating vast amounts of electricity for every system on board and, crucially, for older Nimitz-class carriers powering the steam catapults that launch aircraft. Newer Ford-class carriers use electromagnetic catapults, requiring even more direct electrical power from enhanced nuclear reactors. The decision to adopt nuclear propulsion for these invaluable assets is driven by several critical advantages that conventional power simply cannot match. The most significant is virtually unlimited endurance. Nuclear-powered carriers can operate continuously for 20 to 25 years without needing to refuel, allowing them to project power globally without logistical constraints. They also provide an immense power output for high speeds and energy-intensive systems, offer strategic flexibility and presence by maintaining persistent global presence, 
and optimize internal space by eliminating the need for massive fuel tanks. During operation, nuclear-powered carriers produce zero atmospheric emissions. The US Navy's nuclear program has an exceptional safety record, with over 5,700 reactor years of safe operation without a single reactor accident that has harmed human health or the environment. This is due to robust design, layered containment, rigorous training, and continuous monitoring. In essence, nuclear reactors are the silent, powerful heart of US supercarriers, enabling them to operate globally with unparalleled endurance and capability, a testament to decades of engineering excellence and an unwavering commitment to safety. The heart of the air wing. Let's shift our focus to the primary aircraft for which these floating airports were built. While air-to-air -air combat and dogfights often capture the public imagination, they have always been secondary. The fundamental mission of naval aviation is to attack surface targets. On American aircraft carriers, this mission is currently accomplished by the FA, 18E and F variants of the Super Hornet and the F-35C Lightning II. The F-35C boasts an almost doubled combat range of 770 miles compared to the FA-18's 448 miles. This is largely attributed to the F-35's single most powerful engine ever installed on a fighter jet, the Pratt & Whitney F-135, which generates over 40,000 pounds of thrust. The FA-18's two engines combined produce a similar amount of thrust. However, having two engines provides a critical redundancy in case one engine malfunctions. While the crews and maximum speeds of these two aircraft are not significantly different, the F-35 possesses a monumental advantage – stealth. Stealth, however, was not the reason for the F-35C's lack of a built-in gun. The Air Force variant, the F-35A, features an internal gun that is only exposed when firing. The F-35B and F-35C variants, however, forgo this internal gun, which actually provides an advantage. They traded the gun for additional fuel, granting the F-35C greater range and allowing the aircraft carrier to remain farther from its targets. Nevertheless, if a gun is required, the F-35C can be equipped with a pod under its belly that houses a 25mm Gatling gun. Both fighters can carry up to 18,000 pounds of weapons. However, the F-35 can only carry 5,000 pounds of these weapons within its internal weapons bays. To carry both internal and external weapons, the F-35 must sacrifice its stealth capabilities. The F-35 also features the most advanced sensor suite of any fighter in history, including sophisticated electronic warfare capabilities to locate adversaries and disrupt their attacks. The FA-18 Super Hornet lacks this inherent capability, necessitating the existence of the next category of naval aircraft. The EA-18G Growler was developed on the FA-18 platform, but with added electronic warfare capabilities. Beyond jamming enemy radar and communication systems, the Growler can detect surface-to-air threats and neutralize them through jamming. It can also carry anti-radiation missiles designed to home in on enemy radar signals. The EA-18G Growler essentially softens enemy defenses, thereby allowing FA-18 Super Hornets to penetrate heavily defended areas and conduct attacks without being detected. The Unsung Heroes For the thousands of sailors who call aircraft carriers home, their favorite naval airplane is arguably the one that delivers their Christmas letters and Amazon packages. The Carrier Onboard Delivery COD, aircraft is responsible for bringing personnel, supplies, mail, and even Amazon orders to the carrier while it's at sea. For decades, the C-2 Greyhound fulfilled this vital role. The C-2 is actually a derivative of the E-2 Hawkeye, but it features a widened fuselage with a rear ramp for easier loading and unloading. Sharing airframes offers a significant advantage in terms of maintenance aboard supercarriers, as many components are common, simplifying parts inventory and maintenance efforts for the crew. In 2009, the Navy began seeking a C-2 replacement, and in 2015, they announced a variant of the Osprey, designated the CMV-22B, as its successor. The fleet of C-2 Greyhounds is slated to be completely replaced by the Osprey by 2028. One of the key advantages of using a tilt-rotor aircraft like the Osprey is its ability to take off and land like a helicopter while flying like a turboprop aircraft during long-range transits, offering an optimal blend of access and speed. 
the Navy is also exploring another type of aircraft that has only become feasible in recent decades – unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs. For example, the MQ-25 Stingray can be launched from an aircraft carrier's flight deck, much like any other catapulted naval aircraft. It is the first ever UAV to successfully provide in-flight refueling to other naval aircraft, including the Super Hornet, E-2 Hawkeye, and F-35. Without the Stingray, the only other aircraft that could be launched from a carrier for refueling missions was the Super Hornet itself, using refueling pods attached under its belly. However, the obvious disadvantage of using a strike fighter as a refueling tank was that it burned through the service life of many Super Hornets faster than initially anticipated. Thus, the Stingray represents a significant and welcome addition to the fleet. Not all naval drones have been successful. In July 2018, the initial operational test and evaluation of the MQ-8C Fire Scout were conducted aboard the USS Coronado, an Independence-class littoral combat ship. The Fire Scout is an unmanned helicopter with autonomous takeoff and landing capabilities, both day and night. Equipped with powerful cameras and sensors, this platform was intended to extend the reach of naval forces and reduce risk to human pilots. However, with a price tag of $28 million per unit, the cost was deemed not worth the capability and the Navy decided to place the Fire Scout in storage. Therefore, until UAV technology matures further, the E-2 Hawkeye and its dedicated crew will continue to take the first shot of the catapult. Innovations and Future of Carrier Aviation Naval aviation is a realm of continuous evolution, with new technologies and innovative concepts constantly shaping the next generation of carrier operations. This forward-looking approach ensures that aircraft carriers remain at the forefront of global power projection, adapting to new challenges and threats. One of the most significant leaps forward is embodied in the US Navy's new Gerald R. Ford-class carriers with the introduction of the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System EMALS. This revolutionary technology replaces the traditional steam-powered catapults that have launched aircraft for decades. Instead of steam, EMALS uses powerful electromagnets to accelerate aircraft down the flight deck. This magnetic force provides a smoother, more controlled launch, which not only reduces stress on the aircraft's airframe, but also allows for a wider range of aircraft, from lighter drones to heavier manned jets, to be launched more efficiently. Furthermore, EMALS boasts reduced maintenance requirements compared to its steam-driven predecessor, contributing to higher operational availability for the carrier. Complementing EMALS is the Advanced Arresting Gear AAG, a corresponding new system designed for safely recovering aircraft upon their return. AAG utilizes energy-absorbing water turbines, offering more precise and efficient control during the landing process, further enhancing safety and operational flexibility. Looking further into the future, the integration of unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, is poised to expand dramatically beyond current capabilities like the MQ-25 Stingray tanker drone. Future carrier air wings could see the deployment of unmanned combat aerial vehicles UCAVS, which would be capable of conducting strike missions with reduced risk to human pilots or loyal wingman drones designed to operate in conjunction with manned fighter jets. These unmanned platforms could significantly extend the range, firepower, and survivability of carrier air wings by performing dangerous reconnaissance, electronic warfare, or even kinetic strike roles. This shift will likely influence new aircraft designs, as future fighter jets and specialized drones will be tailored specifically for advanced carrier operations, considering factors like enhanced stealth, higher speeds, and greater autonomy. Finally, aircraft carriers and their air wings are constantly adapting to the evolving landscape of modern warfare. This includes addressing the rise of formidable new threats such as hypersonic missiles, which pose a significant challenge due to their extreme speed and maneuverability. Carriers are also evolving to operate effectively within advanced anti-access, area denial, A2-AD strategies, which aim to prevent adversaries from entering or operating within a specific area. This adaptation involves improvements in defensive capabilities, enhanced electronic warfare, and the development of new tactics to ensure that these indispensable platforms can continue to project power and maintain their strategic relevance in future conflicts.